Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Dustin Smith and I'm with A2K, Allegiance to the King. And today I want to ask a question in regard to Jesus preaching and announcing the gospel of the kingdom of God. This particular question. I want to ask, how important is the kingdom of God that Jesus himself announced? Okay, how important is the kingdom of God, okay? We can look at some of the things that Jesus says within the Gospels, within Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, and we can get some sort of idea as to how significant and how powerful this kingdom of God is. And remember, the kingdom of God was the contents of Jesus' saving gospel message, okay? So let's look here in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. It's a good place to start because in Matthew 6 and verse 33, Jesus commands his listeners, he commands his followers to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you, okay? So Jesus tells his followers, he commands his disciples to seek first and foremost, not second, not third, not somewhere else down the list, but first in priority, the disciples are to seek God's kingdom and God's righteousness. And the promise is, if they do this, then everything else will come together. Then all of these things will be added unto you. And the all of these things refers to in the context of Matthew chapter 6 as to food, drink, clothing, the basic necessities, okay? So here Jesus is telling his disciples that the kingdom of God is to be sought first and foremost. It is that important. It is that significant. And it needs to be sought first and foremost, okay? And so when I think about the question, how important is the kingdom of God within the teachings of Jesus, it seems, according to something like Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33, that it is extremely important. It is highly important. It is the number one thing that Jesus tells us that we need to be seeking and searching after, okay? Now we can see this also in Matthew chapter 6 when Jesus talks in the Lord's Prayer, and he says in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10 that we are to pray for the kingdom to come, which is another way of talking about the time when God's will will be done on earth as it is in heaven, okay? So this is something that we're supposed to pray for. It's something that we're supposed to long for. It's something that we need to petition God to bring about both in our lives, but ultimately in the time when Jesus is going to return to consummate this kingdom and God's rule upon this earth, okay? So the kingdom is supposed to be sought first and foremost, and we're seeing here in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10 that we're supposed to be praying for this kingdom to come, and when the kingdom comes, that is when God's will is being done, on earth as it is in heaven. So if we're told that we are supposed to pray for the kingdom to come, then surely it means that it is highly significant. It is extremely important. Now, Jesus has this other saying in Luke chapter 18 and verse 17, Luke 18, 17, that I think really settles the issue as to whether or not the kingdom is important or whether or not the kingdom is required and essential for Christians and their discipleship. Look here in Luke chapter 18 and verse 17. Jesus says, Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it at all. You hear what Jesus said there? If you do not accept or receive the kingdom like a child, you will not certainly enter it, okay? And in the Greek text here, he actually uses the double negative. Now, in English, we don't use the double negative because that's just improper grammar. It's improper English, okay? <clears throat> but in Greek, when you use the negative twice, it's used for emphasis. It means not just that you will not enter it. It means you will certainly not enter it. You will absolutely not enter it. You will never, ever enter into the kingdom. But what Jesus is saying here is that if you don't receive this kingdom, if you don't accept this kingdom like a child, then you absolutely, certainly will never ever enter into it, okay? That sounds like the kingdom without question and our responsibility to accept it and to receive it and to understand it and to believe it and to put our hope and faith and trust and loyalty and obedience into that entire package is absolutely required without question. There's no negotiation. There's no ambiguity in this passage. If you don't receive it, you will certainly never enter into it. That means the kingdom is extremely important. It is so powerful. And this is why, folks, this is why when it comes to evangelism and it comes to us 
receiving and accepting Jesus into our lives. We first and foremost need to receive and accept Jesus' gospel, which is Jesus' gospel message about the kingdom of God that Jesus inaugurated in his ministry with his miracles, his death, his resurrection, and his exaltation. And ultimately, that kingdom is going to be consummated when Jesus returns to bring about the new heavens and the new earth and the restoration of all of God's creation, the resurrection of the dead, and the defeat of death, finally. This kingdom is so important. It's to be sought first and foremost. We are to pray for it, and we are to accept it as a child accepts things. Accept it with that childlike humility, with that childlike faith, where a child would just take it and embrace it as if it's the most important thing in their life. Folks, I hope this has encouraged you to take very seriously the kingdom of God, its message, and primarily the fact that it is the contents of the gospel message that saves people and puts people in right relationship with God. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and share for more videos about evangelism that comes out every Monday here on Allegiance to the King's YouTube page. My name is Dustin Smith, and I'm with A2K Allegiance to the King. And until next time, take care.